Hello. I'm so excited to be here and speak to you. And I love Aspen. I've been here many, many times. I was down, I was here for six weeks in the 1970s training for the Olympic tryouts in Colorado Springs, training at a house here in Aspen. And I spent a lot of my life um, enjoying this wonderful town. So always great to be here and see friendly faces and friends. Today I'm gonna to talk about some general basic information for probably the first five minutes and get into, then get into some of the new information about how nutrition affects the brain. And the underlying theme of this presentation is that nutritional science has made such remarkable advances in the last decade. So now we can say with authority that you don't have to ever have a heart attack or a stroke. You don't have to have diabetes. You don't have to get demented in later life. And you don't have to get depression either. We have the solutions. We can prevent these diseases. They're pre not predominantly the result of nutritional ignorance. And I'm gonna go over, some, over with some of this information with you today and be available to answer your questions and to talk more about it through the weekend. So let's get started. And the theme is that these diseases are not natural or the inevitable consequence of aging. Most of the illnesses that plague Americans never happened in, pri in, 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 his, in human history. Cancer was not even mentioned in the scientific and medical literature 300, 400 years ago. The first cancer was scrotal cancer, noted in chimney sweeps in the 17th century. And we have an odds of data we can talk about, but let me move forward and get started. So this is about the basics of nutritional science and recognizing that we have the advances where you can live to be 100 years old in great health today. So food gives us two types of nutrients. It gives us macronutrients. Macro means big. And those are nutrients that contain calories, like fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And we know that in the modern world, people eat too much fat, too much carbohydrate, and too much protein. And excess calories shortens human lifespan and destroys people's health. And the one thing that's been proven in the history of science to, rap, to radically extend lifespan, radically extend lifespan, like, like increasing lifespan one and a half times, is caloric restriction in an environment of micronutrient adequacy. In other words, we have to get a sufficient amount of micronutrients, these vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytochemicals that do not contain calories, but we have to get all those micronutrients we need without consuming excessive calories. If you consume 25 calories a day too much, after 10 years, that's more, that's 30 pounds you just consumed. And that shortens your lifespan by 15 years. Just 25 calories a day too much. If you consume 25 calories a day too little, you're not gonna get too thin. Your metabolic rate will slow. Your respiratory quotient, your calories burned through breathing will diminish. You'll age slower. And your brain will not, will be, will not shrink. It's getting, so we're talking here about the secret to long life. The real fountain of youth is, to, is H equals N over C. Your healthy life expectancy, how long you're gonna live in your later years, and the quality of your life in those later years is proportional to the micronutrient per calorie density of your diet. That means you have to eat more foods with a high nutritional bang per caloric buck. Do you know what those foods are that have a lot of nutrition, a lot of micronutrients per calorie? Do you know what those foods are? Like green vegetables and tomatoes and strawberries and beans and onions and mushrooms and berries that are, that are and, and you know foods that are like just empty calories with no nutritional value at all. What are some of those foods? Candy or croissants and like, like people have on their plates. They're demonstrate they're demoing those foods, those breast cancer, dementia, depression causing foods. You're demoing it right now. Show me the foods you shouldn't be eating, right? Okay, so we have to eat a diet high in nutrients per calorie. That's the first principle of a nutritarian diet. And the standard American diet is, is about more than half of the calories come from processed foods, like bagels and bread and oils and donuts and cookies and rice cakes and breakfast bars and chips and cookies and candy and soft drinks. That's like half of what Americans are eating, which contain no significant micronutrient load, no antioxidants, no phytochemicals. And then Americans eat another 30% of calories from animal products. And animal products don't contain phytochemicals and antioxidants. The whole, mostly what Americans eat, are foods that are micronutrient and fiberless and have no phytochemicals, the foods that fuel the brain. We're not eating, and the 10% the or so of produce we eat, half of that's white potato products like french fries and ketchup. 
right? That's, so we're, we're really not eating a diet designed for human, the human species. And the number one cause of death in America, right, are heart attacks and strokes. And number two are the varied cancers added together. And these diseases are, are preventable. We don't have to have them. We could, we could stop, solve our health care crisis right now in a month. We could cut our health care expenditures in the country by three quarters within one month. All we'd have to do is change the way people were fed. And this diet's been designed by ISIS. But you know, fast food is even worse. Because fast food has certain characteristics. And I'm not just talking about foods you purchase in a fast food restaurant. There isn't fast food restaurants here in Aspen, but plenty of people are still living on fast food because fast food is things you like commercial baked goods and cookies and bagels and things that are in bags and they're digested rapidly. You can purchase them, eat them rapidly, and the, here's the thing. The calories go into the bloodstream very rapidly. That's what defines a fast food. Sure, it has synthetic ingredients that cause cancer, like white flour contains potassium bromate, which is a class two carcinogen that's outlawed in Europe, but we have it in the flour, white flower parks in America. It's calorically dense, nutritionally barren, highly flavored, high in salt and sugar. These foods are dangerous, but they're available everywhere. And they have, and they accelerate damage to the brain. First of all, what happens is when foods are absorbed very rapidly, these calories enter the bloodstream very quickly, like a bolus. You know what the word bolus means? When a doctor gives you a drug, if he injects it with a needle and gives you it to all at once within a few minutes, or a few, it's called a bolus, but he puts it in an IV bag and he drips it into you over like a two hour period, little by little it goes in like a couple of, you know, a little bit over drops over a few hour period. Well, when you eat foods that absorb very rapidly into the bloodstream, your body builds up fat storage hormones. You know what else happens? You, stim you sim stimulate dopamine production in the brain. And that's what happens when you take cocaine or heroin or opiates and you have fast food that they just see. We need high glycemic carbohydrates where the sugar goes into the bloodstream in the five or 10 minutes after it's eaten. That stimulates dopamine in the brain and makes you a sugar addict. And when you eat foods that are like white rice and honey and maple syrup and, and oils, Cooked vegetable oils go into the bloodstream very rapidly because their fibers removed. And when you heat oils at high temperature, they become rancid and you form toxic compounds that are carcinogenic and mutagenic that damage the DNA and can cause birth defects in children. But here's the point. We're talking here about damage to the brain and foods that are digested and absorbed rapidly don't just, sti don't just stimulate fat storage hormones. They also cause brain damage. And we're talking here about cooked oils and white flour versus a source of fat and carbohydrate that are low glycemic, that absorb very slowly, like beans and nuts and root vegetables and other carbohydrates. So when you eat fast food, when you go to fast food restaurants, when you eat commercial baked goods, what happens to people? Well, what happens, comparing people who eat fast food regularly, they have 10 times the risk of heart attack and stroke, 10 times compared to people that don't go to fast food restaurants, right? French fries and cancer studies show that one serving of French fries a week, just one serving of potato fried in oil per week increases your risk of breast cancer by 27%. Once a week. Damage to the genes leading to autism in your offspring. And what causes childhood cancer? With the little children eating fast food? No. Their parents were. It damages the genes. So you have genetic problems and birth defects in the offspring because you're eating unhealthy foods. And you know what's linked to the leading cause of death in children? Night hot dogs and bacon and luncheon meats linked to childhood cancer and, of course, the lack of green vegetables in the parents' diet. And, of course, we're talking about right now today depression, violence, mental illness, drug addiction, and illegal drug use I'm talking about that fast food and processed commercial carbohydrates are the gateway drug to opiates and heroin use. So the urban poor on fast food, I talked a lot about this in the, my book coming out, Fast Food Genocide, how years ago when the slaves were freed in the 1850s, they had a large degree of centenarians. A lot of their, the black slaves 
lived to be more than 100 years old. They had very excellent health, and they pursued education and had educational achievements that were unsurpassed. It wasn't until the white supremacy movements drove them out of the South and people couldn't get fresh food availability in inner cities, we started to see problems. The point I'm making is that these problems we see in the inner cities, like a high degree of heart attack deaths, 80% increased risk of fatal stroke, twice as likely to die of heart attack, double the risk of developing dementia, the diabetic epidemic. Wow. The point here I'm making is that these this isn't because people are weaker or have some genetic difficulty. It's because the access to food isn't present. The brain is under attack. That fried foods and sweets and processed meats and commercial baked goods, burgers, sausage, and pizza are linked to depression and dose-dependent matter, so much so that two servings a week of commercial baked goods, one croissant, one bagel, one croissant, one cookie, right? Two servings a week, over 50% increased risk of developing depression. Did you hear that? And I'm saying in a dose-dependent manner, that means if you have three servings or four servings or five servings or six servings or ten servings a week, your risk of developing depression goes up dramatically in direct proportion to those dosages of these commercial baked goods. So the brain is under attack and it affects attentiveness, school performance, and damages brain cells. When you episodic high glucose levels, we know that diabetics, type 2 diabetics, are at higher risk of developing depression. They're at higher risk of developing criminal behavior and violence because the sugar damages the brain. But when you have the spikes in sugar damaging the brain when you eat some candy or ice cream and you bring your kids these treats at, at soccer games, it damages their brain and it lowers their school performance and their intelligence. The brain has a continual need for antioxidants found in G-bombs, greens and beans and onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds. When you eat these rich phytochemical decaying foods, it doesn't just prevent breast cancer, it prevents your brain from shrinking and it prevents and maintains your intelligence. We know that, that the, Alpa, the ALSPAC study, the, this study, which followed children and found which children were most intelligent. They found that children who ate more, believe it or not, that ate more greens and fruit in their childhood, more green vegetables and fruit compared to those eating more bread and rice and fast foods, had higher intelligence. And we tracked fast food consumption to lower IQ, right? So we're talking up here about fast food consumption and autism, and also, of course, fast food consumption and childhood cancer when the mother eats the fast food and Eating fast food by mothers, by pregnant women, are linked to increase of gestate, developing gestational diabetes as well, which then causes other problems. So we're talking about the regular consumers of fast food have the worst outcome and that children fed candy before the age of 10 more likely to develop a violent crime or drug-related offenses, and they tracked until the age of 34, and they found that no other variable, not poverty, not living in an urban, dangerous area, not lack of parenting or bad parenting or lack of parents or personality differences, showed as robust a correlation but as to uh, compared to the consumption of candy before the age of 10 years old, the regular consumption of candy. Did you follow that? Nothing showed as strong a correlation. And when you eat fast food, you build up toxic metabolites in your tissues, like free radicals, like advanced glycation end products and other noxious substances, that then when you don't eat food all the time, when you're not digesting food, you feel sickly, like you have headaches, stomach cramping. You need to keep eating food all the time just to feel okay. Think about this. If you're drinking 10 cups of coffee a day and I have you stop coffee, do you feel better or worse? Worse. It's called withdrawal. The withdrawal from the unhealthy foods you're eating keeps people sickly and overweight because they gotta keep eating food all the time. If they don't keep eating food every few hours, they feel sick. They're food addicts. Three quarters of America are food addicts. They gotta keep eating food or they feel sickly. And the worse the nutritional quality of your diet, the worse you feel when you don't constantly eat food and the more you have to overeat to feel okay. The more you need to eat food for energy, to keep your energy levels up, to keep you feeling okay, the more, the, the more sickly you are and the, higher, and the more propensity you have to develop any serious illnesses. And we're talking here, it's not just high glycemic carbohydrates, it's also this diet style in America where people eat in high protein animal products at almost every meal. When we look at studies, because these further change the microbiome and create toxic metabolites when you eat a diet rich in animal products. 
Here's a study published in the Cell Metabolism, Journal of Cell Metabolism in 2014, that followed 6,000 people for 18 years. These people were between the ages of 50 and 65. And those on these high protein diets, rich in animal products, like the paleo diet, so the Atkins diet, had fourfold increased risk in cancer death and 75% increased overall death over this period. And of course, the foods with the strongest link to cancer are processed meats and barbecue and, and, and dairy products. And of course, white flour, sugar, white rice. You know, these white foods and these commercial baked goods that are linked to depression are also strongly linked to hemorrhagic stroke and, and breast cancer. So you want to eat your bagels and your croissants and your breads and your pumpkin and all the kind of fancy banana bread and pumpkin breads, all these breads with all the white flour and sugar mixed in, you're, you're taking risk with breast cancer. Okay, I'm wrapping this up. So here's what we went over. We said that vegetables, beans, fruits, nuts and seeds are super good for you and lifespan extending properties. Excessive amounts of animal products cause disease and refined carbohydrates don't just make people obese and diabetic and overweight. They also cause cancer and they make you lose your brain function. They cause you to become demented later in life and they're linked to depression. A nutritarian diet is vegetable based not grain-based like the American diet. You have lots of fruits and vegetables compared to the American way of eating lots of dairy and meat. And oil is used sparingly in its place. We use lots of nuts and seeds to get the fat. And animal products are used as a condiment very sparingly. And of course, it's based on these superfoods that extend human longevity, that also prevent to protect your brain. The same foods that damage your body and cause heart attacks damage your brain and cause dementia and strokes in later life. So here's an example. Here's a couple that were overweight. She weighed, Tara weighed 226 pounds, Steve weighed 447 pounds. One year following a nutritarian diet, she lost 80 pounds that first year, he lost 220 pounds that first year. 220 pounds in one year. It's not a typo. Their daughter, Chloe, lost 32 pounds and got rid of his asthma. He got rid of his diabetes and his depression. So many people have told they lose their brain, brain fog. They can't concentrate. They lose their food addictions. They get rid of their depression. They don't even look like the same people. And you know who's really thrilled about this? Really thrilled? Really? The dog. <laughs> He's finally got room to sit in the car. All right, wrapping this up, I'm, I'm president of the Nutritional Research Foundation, and we're doing a study on showing that women don't need to get breast cancer. We have 2,000 women signed up for the study so far. It's women who are pledging to follow a nutritarian diet, eating their G-bombs almost every day. G-bombs, G-B-O-M-B-S, greens, beans, mushrooms, onions, berries, and seeds. And I'm mentioning that now, because some of you women may want to go to the website, nutritionalresearch.org, and be a participant in that study. Join that study, spearheaded. I'm a faculty member at Northern Arizona University on the School of Nutritional Sciences, and we're doing this huge study to show that women need not get breast cancer, and we're gonna prove that. And so here are some of my books that I, a few of them I have available today, and the book I'm really excited about um, of course is the book that's not out yet, it's not coming out until October 17. I gave you a little, um, little advanced taste of it today called Fast Food Genocide. Thank you for inviting me here. Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate it. Wishing you all great health. <laughs>